Well, there's a new talking point kicking around Washington. You may have heard it in the last few days. The Uranium One story isn't real. It's an ersatz story. It's fake news made up by Republicans. It's a fever dream concocted by people who hate Hillary Clinton and are desperate to create a false equivalence between Donald Trump's presidential campaign and the Clinton machine. Hillary's reputation is being protected by the usual defenders. They say she had nothing to do with Uranium One. And by the way, it wouldn't matter if she was involved, but she wasn't involved anyway. Got it? Interesting question. What's the truth about it? Well, Guy Benson is an editor at townhall.com. He's written a definitive explanation of this story, which seemed pretty fair to us, and he joins us tonight. Guy, thanks all for coming on. Hey, Tucker, congrats on one year, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. So, um, sure. look, I'll, I'll concede, and I hope that I've always conceded every time we've talked about it on this show, that there's a lot that we don't know about this uh, story, and I hope that we haven't overhyped it. But it does seem like there is a story at the bottom of it. You've assessed it maybe a little more coolly than I have. What have you found? Is this a real story? Well, I think it's a question that's interesting, Tucker, because... The story that's being told a lot by Republicans, there is a former White House advisor who is talking about this as if it was treasonous on behalf of Mrs. Clinton. I think there's maybe a, a mythical side to this where people have a lot of misconceptions about especially the tail end of the Uranium One story and Mrs. Clinton's involvement in that. And because this came up recently in a story in The Hill about how the FBI had been investigating Russia's efforts right. on that whole front involving the Clintons a few weeks ago, Republicans have, I think, seized on that to try to draw some sort of equivalency on the broader Russia matter. And that has prompted a bunch of fact checks. And I think some of these fact checks have been really solid and good clearing up some of the laziness or deliberately uh, wrong characterizations of what happened with Uranium One. That all being said, there are elements of the entire saga, which started back in 2005, that I don't think are threats to national security, certainly not treasonous, maybe not criminal, but at least stink to high heaven when it comes to the Clintons and lots and lots of money flowing to their foundation on behalf of people connected to Uranium One who needed favors and got them. Well, so you made, a, I thought, a really good point, and it was worth reminding our viewers of it, that this story wasn't concocted in the basement of the RNC or by Andrew Breitbart, but this was originally broken by the New York Times. That's right. And they detailed former President Clinton's trip to Kazakhstan, where all of this began. And it's, it's complicated and actually worth Googling if you're watching at home. But the bottom line, I think, is this. We know that Uranium One hired the Podesta Group to lobby the Obama administration on this, that there was lobbying by this company on behalf of Russian interests. That's not really disputed. And you've got to sort of wonder why, at the same time that money is flowing not just to the Clinton Foundation but to the Clinton family, again, I, you know, I can't connect to every dot, but I don't think you can just dismiss that as, like, insane conspiracy theorizing, can you? Well, no. And, and so the New York Times story that you just referenced was from 2015. There was also a New York Times story that revealed that Bill Clinton and his team, his entourage, at first had lied about a meeting that occurred at the Clintons' home in Chappaqua with right. officials from Kazakhstan. And then they were told, actually, there's photo evidence that this occurred. And then they changed their story. Uh, that initial New York Times story that was very extensive, very exhaustive, got into a lot of detail about this, including the president, the former president, going over there and striking this very lucrative deal with uh, a man who ended up donating tens of millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation. So uh, that, I think, to me, uh, and then later on, I should add, there was some jeopardy in one of these deals involving Uranium One with the Kazakh government. And there was a request from that company for intervention from the U.S. government. And right away, the U.S. State Department and the embassy got involved. And wouldn't you know it, the issue got resolved. Hillary Clinton was running the State Department well, at that exactly. time. Exactly. After That's lots of money had exchanged hands. So there, there are... To me, Tucker, some questions about this that not just people like me who are asking them, the New York Times and other journalists have been asking them for years, that smell weird and look like influence peddling and money trading, that may not get up to the hyper-partisan level of hyperventilation that we've seen from some Republicans about this, saying, oh my gosh, Hillary Clinton sold out our nuclear 
program. Yeah, but let me you ask you true? one question. We're almost out of time. Let me ask you one question. Sure. If you notice that it's the same people who are telling us the single gravest threat to American national security is the Russian government, those same people who are telling us that day in and day out are now dismissing Russian attempts to move uranium out of this country to other countries is like no big deal and you're some kind of alt-right wacko if you think that's a big deal both of those well, things can't the, be the, true it was more about the russian government controlling mining interests in the u.s that's not true, taking but, uranium but out they of the have US taken into russia well the u.s government has conceded that they have taken uranium out of this country i mean that's to Not me, really to me, Tucker, I think debate. if we're going to talk about the Democrats and the Russia situation, I think the more fertile ground, uh, uranium one, an interesting thing to discover and talk about. To me, it's fusion GPS. That's, I know, I that's agree. the piece of this puzzle that I think is the most strange, where we've gotten the fewest answers so far with more and more coincidences popping up. Right. I think well, we, that's the approach Republicans we, should take. We Ask tried at that. the beginning of this show with the Democratic consultant who got who started screeching at me. So that's where you know oh, it's obviously that tends to happen, <laughs> Tucker. <laughs> it does. Guy, it's great to see you. Thanks a lot for that. Good to see you, Tucker. Thanks.